But after spending like, you know, I think uh, about eight, eight days with each other by then, you know, through various prisons and, you know, the torment, uh, within 30 seconds we had to just leave him behind. Hi, I'm Jason Mojica, Editor-in-Chief of Vice News. As you may or may not know, last month three Vice News journalists uh, working in southeast Turkey were arrested and imprisoned on the ridiculous charges of supporting a terrorist organization. Two of the journalists, uh, Phil Pendlebury and Jake Hanrahan, were released, but the third, Mohammed Rasul, is still being held and his future remains uncertain. Uh, coming to us live today from London, we've got Jake Hanrahan here to talk to us about that experience, about why the story they were working on was so important, and what we can do to free Rasul. Hi, Jake. Hi, thanks for having me. And uh, thanks to both of you guys for coming on. So we've got a bunch of people uh, ready to talk to you on Skype, and we'll be uh, watching Twitter during the show for any questions that people might have. But let's get started with Nate, uh, who's calling us on Skype from New York. Let's say it to Nate. Hi. Hi, Nate. How are you? Doing fine. Um, yeah, I, I work for Freedom House. I'm based here in New York. I'm the project director for Nations in Transit, and I, I follow Turkey a lot. Um, of course, this isn't the first time journalists have been detained or investigated or even deported from Turkey. There were a bunch of allegations, mostly anonymous in the pro-government press after the detention uh, about what you all were doing, about what Vice was doing in southeastern Turkey. Can you tell us more about what you were covering and who you were interacting with, why you think you were detained? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so we went to the southeast because, of course, the, the you know the peace process between the PKK and the Turkish state is now in tatters. Um, and we've been there before to the southeast um, with the youth wing of the PKK, the YDGH, and there's been a lot of fighting there. Um, civilians are being killed, soldiers are being killed, policemen are being shot. Um, so we wanted to go and find out what was happening, basically. Um, and yeah, we, we went around with a few of these militants um, who claim to have, you know, opened up autonomous zones in the areas they live in. Um, any Turkish police or Turkish authorities that try and come in, they shoot at them. Um, they're all heavily armed, and of course, you know, teenagers with guns trying to take over certain areas is something that's important. So we went down there to report on it. And do you think it was the matter of getting picked up? Do you think it was just a local? issue, sort of the wrong place, wrong time with the police or the security <laughs> services down there, or do you think there was a bigger agenda behind it? Um, to most, I think following, like after our arrest, uh, you know, enough, we released a few other journalists have also been arrested. Um, I think perhaps there is a bigger thing going on where they don't want, you know, journalists to report from that area. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know, I can't really say, I'm not sure, but I, I think maybe there could have been some involvement from, uh, you know, higher up. And what kind of messages are you getting now from the government when when you're communicating with them about Mohammed Rasul? Um, we can't really go into it too much, obviously, because it's quite a delicate case. Uh, but right now, we're just waiting to hear, you know, what the, the next level of uh, progress is. Um, he still hasn't been, you know, sentenced or anything like that. Um, we just hopefully, you know, hope that he will be released as we were. But has he even been formally charged yet? Um, we were all formally charged, but we're still under investigation. Um, even myself and Phil Pendlebury. Um, so yeah, even though we're back here, we're still under investigation. Thanks. Cheers. All right, Nate. Well, thanks for coming on, man. Uh, oh, we were able to answer your questions. You know, we actually did get a lot of uh, interest in the story on Twitter. And I want to take a look at a tweet that we got from uh, Kaylee. So Kaylee wants to know, uh, have the charges against uh, you and your colleagues, Jake, affected how others are reporting on sensitive topics on Turkey? So have you heard from anyone about a chilling effect that uh, this arrest and, and detention might have had? Um, I mean, yeah, certainly without naming any names, a few other journalists, um, quite prominent journalists, have you know reached out to me and spoken to me about it and have kind of said they've noticed that there is a harder crackdown right now um, in the southeast. I know a few of the journalists have been deported after we were. Um, so I think, you know, if there was a message that they were trying to send out, I think it has kind of, you know, affected a few people, yeah. All right. Well, uh, Kaylee, thanks for uh, the question. Uh, so just a reminder, we're watching Twitter right now if anyone has any questions. Um, and uh, speaking of questions, we do have uh, Patrick on Skype, who I know has a few questions for you. So let's say hi to Patrick. Hey, Jason. Uh, hey, Jake. Hi, Patrick. How are you guys How are you? doing? I'm good. I'm good. Um, 
So uh, my, uh, I have three questions. Um, so uh, why do you think Razul is still in prison and you and Philip were released? Um, yeah, that's my first question. Um, I think the sad reality is that we're white Western journalists who, unfortunately, more of a fuss um, gets made about, you know, via other media outlets. Um, and it looks, I guess, worse with British, you know, we have different citizenship. Um, so we were released, so I guess there's a lot of pressure there. Um, us at Vice News, we're doing everything we can still for Resort to kind of, you know, raise awareness. But unfortunately, there just isn't the same amount of uh, news. I mean, we were in the, me and Phil were in the news quite a lot. Um, we've been released, and I don't see any reason why Resort shouldn't be in the news, you know, as much as we were. Unfortunately, you know, it's just not the way it is. Um, so that's why we're doing everything we can to raise awareness. We need people to help us do that as well. Um, you know, because we, we need, he needs to be free as much as we do. He's done absolutely nothing wrong. Okay, and then uh, what is the international community doing? Um, so are they, like, pressing on Turkey? Has anyone spoke out? Has any other countries uh, spoke out against Turkey for uh, imprisoning Razul? Um, well, yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of, uh, there have been a lot of great uh, NGOs and charities and uh, places like that that have done a lot of good work and have helped us and are still helping Razul. Um, Razul is a resident of uh, the KRG in Iraq. Um, they're yet to release a statement, which would, have, you know, would of course be very useful. Um, but right now, yeah, there is a lot of uh, international attention still. Um, it's just trying to keep the attention, I think, going outside of the kind of journalist community, just for you know normal people to still hear about this and you know keep people's attention that way. Okay, and then uh, other than awareness, um, because mm -hmm. I see like uh, a, a push on awareness through social media. What are some other ways people can help? How Vice can help? How the international community can help uh, get uh, Rizul out of prison? Other than awareness. Um, well, I mean, we, we, you know, Vice are doing everything they can, you know, best lawyers, all of that. We can't really talk about that kind of thing because it's an ongoing case. Um, but there's a lot of legal things going on in the background. Um, but, you know, raising awareness is actually massively helpful. It's kind of what got me and Phil out when people realize, and if they look at Rizal's case, it's exactly the same as ours. Um, we did nothing wrong. We were just journalists there reporting on what we went to do. And, you know, for some reason, he's been held longer. Um, so really, it's, it's a case of raising awareness, um, and in the future, we're going to be looking at some uh, campaigns, hopefully. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Hey, Jake. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you know, most of the people watching this are probably familiar with uh, the circumstances, but I wonder if you would be able to walk us through the arrest and, and uh, you know, the imprisonment, and just to help us understand better the situation that Rasul is in right now. Sure, yeah. Um, well, we'd been, we'd been in Turkey for, I think, about five days before we were arrested. We'd been all over the, uh, the southeast. Um, and we're in Diyarbakir for about two days uh, filming. And one night we just came back to our hotel and about 20 police officers you know, were waiting for us on the steps. They jumped off the steps, um, took us into custody um, on these insane charges of assisting the Islamic State somehow. Um, we were held for around four days in these kind of solitary custody cells. Um, we went to court and we thought, you know, this is all going to be over because, is, of course, they, the, the police even said to us there's no evidence of this. And when we went to court, um, you know, the prosecutor said there, there needs to be a further investigation. That's when we were sent to the high security terror prison, um, which was, you know, of course, extremely uh, scary for all of us. Um, we didn't know what was going on. We didn't get phone calls. Um, we saw our lawyers a few times. Um, and then one day, you know, the, the, the guard just came and said, you two are free. Um, which was, of course, you know, a horrible moment having to, to leave us all there after, you know, all three of us have been together the whole time and supporting each other. And, uh, and then we had to just, you know, just leave him there. And what did, what did Rasul say at that moment? We just said to him, uh, he, he just said, look, get me out, guys, get me out. And we said, look, we're going to be fine. We're going to do everything we can. And we just said, yeah, just like, OK, OK, I understand, I understand. Um, and yeah, we just kind of, I don't know, what can you say? You know, what can we do? Nothing we could do. You know, we even asked the guards, like, can you give us one minute? We just want to talk to our friend. They said, no, get out, get out, get out. So after spending, like, you know, I think uh, about eight, eight days with each other by then, you know, through various prisons and, you know, the torment, uh, within 30 seconds, we had to just leave him behind. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, that's, that's unfortunate. Um, but, yeah. you know, I, I hate to, to change the topic off of Rasul, but, you know, one of the things that we have been discussing is the status of the free press in uh, Turkey. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, Robert on Twitter actually wants to know uh, if the people that you encountered in Turkey, 
uh, citizens of Turkey are aware of how much the government is controlling the media. Uh, did you get a sense from anyone if they were aware and how they felt about it? Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, people are quite aware that, you know, people will say, you know, they'll talk about a headline and they'll say, oh, yeah, but that's, you know, that's government owned press. So kind of, you know, either disregard it or, you know, think what you want. But um, I think people are aware. Um, but, you know, there are there are other more issues going on. I mean, you know, people having their houses shelled and, you know, bullets flying through their windows in certain areas. So I think, you know, generally normal civilians are not concentrating on the free press. They're just, you know hoping to uh, just live a normal life. Great. So, you know, um, I hope that answered your question, uh, Robert. But uh, let's talk to one of our other Skype guests. We've got Courtney on the line who uh, wants to ask you a few questions. Let's say to Courtney. Hi, Jay. Thank you for having me. Hello. Uh, are you prior Good. Uh, prior to your arrest, you were covering conflict between Turkish forces and the Kurdistan Workers' Party. Uh, will you continue covering the pro-Kurdistan Workers' Party? Um, I mean, considering that most of their movements take place in uh, Turkey, which we can't go back to, you know, it's going to be very right. hard. But um, it's, it's certainly a, a topic that um, for a long time myself and Phil have found quite interesting. We were kind of focusing on this youth group, uh, the youth kind of wing, who they kind of use as like, uh, they see themselves as like urban protection units, um, because it's, you know, they're kind of the next generation. You know, it begs the question: Where are these teenagers getting their arms from? So that's kind of what we uh, we find quite interesting about it. But I mean, we we can try and cover it as uh, as best we can. But it's certainly not made us you know shy away from uh, reporting. Uh, what advice can you give to young reporters who want to cover conflict in uh, or cover crisis in areas of conflict? Um, I just think be very be very prepared. You know, do the proper training. Don't run into anything take as much advice from, you know, other journalists, more experienced journalists as you can. And when you're using fixers, drivers, etc., make sure they have good recommendations, you know, they, you know, they come from, uh, you know, the other journalists have given you. Um, I think as well, just ask yourself, you know, where it is you're going to cover, is it worth the risk you're taking? Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, Jake, uh, jumping off her qu question there about, you know, young journalists working uh, in conflict and crisis zones, uh, I wonder if you could talk a bit about the importance of local journalists in doing this type of work and, and you know, kind of explain a bit the type of work that Rasul did and, and how he worked for many other news organizations and, you know, the important oh, role he yeah. plays, yeah. Of course, yeah. I mean, without, without uh, you know, local journalists, the, the job would be impossible. I mean, we kind of kind of connections that Rizal, you know, helped us with, you know, there's people I can't even speak to, so I don't speak the language. I mean, it's essential, really. You can't just turn up somewhere where there's, you know, conflict going on and just expect to start filming. You need people to introduce you, to kind of sort you out, to fit you up. So, um, yeah, they're, they're like an integral part of it. You could, you could not do it without the local journalists, you know, people like Rizal. Yeah. And, you know, everyone, you know, when this happened, a lot of people reached out, uh, of course, expressing concern for you and Phil, but uh, there was this <laughs> massive outpouring from a uh, journalist who worked with Rasul and, and all singing his praises. And I just wonder mm. if you could tell us a little bit about him personally, you know, for those who don't know him. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a great guy. He's like one of the funniest guys I've ever met. Like, he's, he's, very, he's very dedicated to his work outside of work. Like, you know, you can have a great laugh with him. I mean, to be honest, even sat there in like, you know, high security, you know, so-called terror prisons, he was kind of keeping the spirits up. He was cracking jokes. He was like, he found a newspaper and he just spent hours like doing Sudoku on the back of like a bit of newspaper. Like, you know, he kind of took it all in his stride. Um, and at the end of the day, like, he, you know, he's just a young guy. He's 24, like he likes to have fun and he works very hard. And he's a very smart guy as well, which sadly seems to have worked against him because the fact he's incredibly intelligent and does a good job somehow means he's, you know, an agent or some sort, whatever it is they're trying to say he is. Yeah. Well, hey, Jason, I, don't, I hope you don't have any questions because uh, Katie Tyrell uh, on Twitter actually has a question for you, uh, uh, both of you guys. Uh, Katie mm. wants to know how the British public can help uh, to get Rasul released. And uh, let's broaden that, too. How can, how can the general public help to get Rasul out? Uh, I think the general public can help by just understanding exactly who he is. He's not just some like, guy that we picked up. He's, you know, he's a professional journalist. Um, and, you know, a very good friend of ours, he's just like me, he's just like Phil, he's, you know, there is no difference apart from, you know, he comes from Iraq, we come from England, he's, he's the same guy, he supports Arsenal, do you know what I mean, he, he's just a normal guy. People need to understand that, you know, he's locked up there, um, and he does, people do need to raise awareness in the same way they did for us. 
Great. Well, you know, I think that that brings us just about to the end of our show. So, uh, Jake, I'm going to ask you if you've got any last words you want to say before we uh, let you get up to the rest of your day. I um, just wanted to thank everybody for the support uh, myself and Philip have been given and just ask that everybody can please, you know, keep trying to support us all in whatever way possible. Like every little bit does honestly help. Cool. All right. Well, hey, Jake, thanks for coming on. And uh, yeah, Jason, uh, we'll give you the final word uh, for the show. Yeah, I just want to say thanks for joining us and please check uh, Vice News for updates on Rasul's case. And um, to that last question, you know, write your member of Congress or Parliament. Uh, I think that will have a big impact, especially if you write them on paper and put it in an envelope and with, use a stamp. Politicians are old school. They like paper. Um, so honestly, that'll make a big difference and you'll get a response. Um, so thanks again for joining us. Uh, please use the hashtag FreeRasul on social media. And uh, we'll see you next time.